Welcome back, my name is Carrie, and today I've got a single wide that appears to be sinking. I'm a big fan of manufactured homes, but if they aren't set up properly, they can be a ticking time bomb that will eventually require your time, effort, and money. One of the most important parts of a manufactured home is the base it sits on because if it doesn't have a solid base, there's a really good chance it will move, which will result in, well, we'll get to that in a second. I get it, it's a lot more fun to spend money on jacuzzi tubs and skylights, but you need to leave enough money in the budget that you don't skimp on the pad. In defense of the way this home was set up, it was done 27 years ago in the year 1994, so a lot of things have changed. Manufactured homes have changed, and so has the way they're set up. What I'm gonna do is show you the problem and what caused it, look at how we do things now, and tell you how we're gonna fix it, so let's do it. Behind me is a 1994 single wide. It's 14 feet wide by 66 feet long, making it 924 square feet. At first glance, everything looks to be pretty normal with it. It's blocked, it's skirted, and if you didn't take the time to look closer, you'd think everything was fine. But when we do look closer, it doesn't take very long to figure out that there are a few problems with this house, so let's check it out. From the back of the house, you can see by the angle of the skirting, it's longer on the left side, it's shorter on the right side, that this home wasn't put on level ground, which isn't necessarily a problem per se, but it can lead to some problems. And that's exactly what's happened here. Because this is a 1994, for the first five, six years, it was probably fine, not an issue that it was placed on unlevel ground, but over time, problems start to show up. So let's have a look. If we're getting close and look from another angle, you can see that the skirting is just wonky all the way down the side of this house, which is a definite sign of a problem, but could be a bunch of different problems. Look at that. But at least you know it's something you need to investigate further. Whatever's going on under this house isn't necessarily a direct result of it being placed on an unlevel pad. It could be something to do with the soil, something to do with how the pad was made. It wasn't packed enough, the wrong material was used. Could be a number of things, but what we do know is that there is a problem. I'm trying to keep the camera as level as possible, but if you look where the skirting meets the siding, it looks as though the house is leaning from left to right. And the reason it looks like that is because that is exactly what's happening. So if we go in from the corner, you'll see the same pressure on the skirting. So it's not only leading from left to right, but it's also leading from front to back. Look at that, not a good thing. It was really obvious from the beginning that we had a problem with this house. The skirting wasn't the only giveaway. So we're gonna go inside and I'll show you a few other things you can look for because with this house, we had a few more dead giveaways. This is the bedroom at the end of the house that we were looking at from the outside. You probably can't tell from the video, but when you come into this room, you almost start to pick up speed because of the slope of the house. So another dead giveaway here is the pictures on the wall. It's really hard to get them to hang straight. And if you look at this one, the wall's bowed. So it's touching there, touching there, touching there. Starts to come off the wall there because the wall's not straight and it all relates back to what's going on underneath this house. So an easy way to show you just how bad it is in this bedroom would be to bring out a level, but you know what? I'll do you one better. Look at this. <laughs> That's a problem. We're gonna head back outside, have a look underneath this house and see how bad it actually is. I've got the skirting off the end so we can get a closer look and as bad as it looks from the outside, believe it or not, it actually looks worse when you get under there. So this block right here is leaning over like this, but not only that, it's not even making contact with the frame, which explains why our ball ran directly over to this corner. It's because it's just kind of hanging there, so it's definitely dipping down that direction. So we know what the problem is. At the same time, I'm not that concerned about the house flipping over on its side because we still do have blocks all the way down the frame on this side that are making contact. But to show you what I'm talking about, I think it's best that we get under there. Look at how much this front block is leaning. This is like looking back in time to 1994 because this might be how they did it in 1994, but this definitely isn't how we do it now. So you can see this is all loose, which it shouldn't be if it was holding the weight of the house. So if we look down the rest of what's going on under here, 
Use this as an example of what not to do. And then I'll show you an example of what to do because if done right, then none of this would have been a problem. Obviously it is fixable, it's just a matter of doing it. So it's always better to do it the first time. Let's go look at what it should look like and then I'll tell you what our plans are to get this thing fixed up. All right, I've got the skirting off on another project we're working on and as you can see, this one is sitting on a full concrete pad. So this puppy is completely level if we have a look underneath. You can see that's the next block down there. They're every eight feet all the way underneath this house up and down the frame. So what we do is concrete wood, concrete wood, and then the frame. So that's the complete opposite end of the spectrum and a really good example of what it should look like under a manufactured home. We did concrete, but you don't necessarily have to. In my area, you can do a gravel pad. The reason we did concrete is because this is a drywall house and we just don't want this house moving at all. So now we have to figure out where we're gonna land somewhere between what that house has now and this, and I'll tell you exactly what we're gonna do. There are a number of different ways to re-level this house from zero dollars up to thousands of dollars. The budget fix would be to jack up the house, straighten the blocks that are there, add some shims to level it out, then simply lower the house back down. The most expensive fix would be to move the home and completely redo the pad from start to finish. The problem is that would require removing the deck, taking out all the skirting and disconnecting all the services. Then you'd move the home back to exactly where it is now, hook up the services, skirt it, and build another deck, which would be extremely expensive and not really what we're looking for. So what we're going to do is somewhere in the middle between free and expensive. We're gonna jack the home up, take the front blocks out, fill in the hole, re-level the problem area, put new blocks in, and then we're gonna set the home down. All of these options will fix the problem and re-level the home, which is the main concern. Like I mentioned before, this is a great example of why a solid, well-done pad done right the first time is always the best option. To come back years later and try and get a perfect pad when the house is already there is gonna be way more expensive and it's a hassle. If you want to see a video of this fix, let me know and I'll definitely get some footage. That's all I've got for today. If you like manufactured home videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I've got new ones coming out every single week. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.